find ourselves just four years away from our golden anniversary and at the brink of a new era for Pitsa College. Pitsa was built by people who dreamed of a unique kind of liberal arts institution. These 11 faculty and three staff loved young people and understood that a liberal arts education was the key to leading a well-lived life. Over the next decade, we will become a more sustainable and better endowed institution while retaining all of our traditions. We will, as a community, have an even stronger voice in debates regarding education, social responsibility, and balanced progress of the human enterprise. This year, 46 is my favorite number. And it's not because I'm 46. I kissed that goodbye a few years ago. <laughs> this year, 46 is my favorite. And as we know, 46 is a wonderfully positive integer. I'm saying this for the mathematics field group. <laughs> as of last May, we have celebrated 46 years of graduating classes at Pitzer College. Our first graduating class of 1965 consisted of 100% transfer students, which we had to have at the time in order to receive our WASC accreditation. And for those of you keeping count, this is my first WASC mention. More to follow. <laughs> <laughs> this year we saw 229 graduates, one of our largest classes, walk across the stage at our new commencement plaza. In the fall of 1964, our campus consisted of two academic buildings, Scott and Sanborn and two trees. <laughs> One of the trees died. <laughs> and the class of 1968, as you can see them here, uh, industriously digging away, replaced the dead tree with what they thought was an orange tree. However, it was actually a grapefruit tree, and that died too. <laughs> the total amount of land owned by the college at its founding was 33 acres, making us the smallest of the Claremont colleges. Obviously, things have changed a lot since then. And when alumni from the classes of the 60s and 70s come to reunion, I hear again and again how beautiful the campus is. And the reason why it is so gorgeous is because of all the work that our faculty and staff and students have done in creating our magnificent gardens. When we finally complete our purchase of the East Campus across Claremont Boulevard, rumored to take place within the next 15 months, a statement that I make on an annual basis now, and I have been for the last four years, thanks to CC. We will own 50 acres, and we will be the third largest Claremont College. The number 46 also denotes our US news ranking this year. Only in America can higher education be reduced to a project runway kind of competition. <laughs> the 17th century French philosopher René Descartes really was prescient in regards to US news when he summed up the impossibility of measuring one's existence. Let's all say it together, dubito ergo cogito ergo sum, <laughs> or as we would say, I doubt, therefore I think, therefore I am. <laughs> At any rate, over the last eight years, we've seen a dramatic rise in our ranking, due in no small measure because the institution is financially stronger. We've also seen an increase in selectivity, as well as an increase in retention. What has also been very helpful is we actually complete all of the US news forms now and we send them in. <laughs> <laughs> this past year was also a very significant one for our Pitzer and alumni success in being awarded Fulbright Fellowships. And as you know, undoubtedly, it was founded in 1946. A record-breaking 23 Fulbrights were awarded to Pitzer students and two alumni this year, with an astonishing 11% <coughs> of our class of 2010 being awarded Fulbrights. 74% of the class of 2010 studied abroad compared to just 2% nationally. Since our founding, Pitzer College students and alumni have been awarded over 100 Fulbright Fellowships, sending our community members to 46 countries. This is the fifth year that per 1,000 students, we are number one in the nation for the number of Fulbrights that we generate. And last year was the 46th year that Stephen L. Glass, the John <laughs> A. McCarthy Professor of Classics, taught at Pitzer College, and Steve is the last of the 11 founding faculty to be teaching here 
at Pitzer full time, and he was originally hired by President Atherton. A few ye years ago, Steve reminisced about the early days of Pitzer. <laughs> <laughs> this was taken a couple of years ago. <laughs> Consider the notion of being or starting a new college in the 1960s. What are you going to do with it? especially given our membership in the Claremont Colleges. Some of the students at the college bought into the ideas of the 60s, and others didn't. But there was a general awareness of social issues. And when you went to Pitzer, you had to at least confront them, whether you believed in them or not. Just being alive in the 60s was a sociological field trip. <laughs> it was an exercise, by and large, for the young that was both exhilarating and exhausting. It takes a certain amount of chutzpah to throw your lot in with a new college. They were free-thinking kids with independence of thought, and they became enormously self-sufficient people. This year will be Steve's last year teaching full-time. Is Steve here? I had 
hadn't yet been selected as president when I remember in one of my meetings with students, the student asked me, so just how are you going to do this? <laughs> and so here's how. Over the years, with all of your involvement, we have now torn down Old Sanborn, built three new LEEDS certified residence halls, have plans to build three more, however this time we will build, build them at the LEED platinum level, thus making sure that we continue to be the leading residential liberal arts college in the country for sustainable building. In a few years, Holden will be also torn down and while the master plan I inherited originally called for tearing down all of our residence halls, I'd like to keep the two north towers of Mead intact, especially the Marquis Library, out of respect for Pitzer's history and culture. The planning for our three mixed-use residence halls is now complete. The offices that will be located in them include study abroad, media studies, and the Eyeglass Center. At this time, the city has approved our plans. The architect has completed his drawings. A pre-construction contract is in place, and if everything continues according to plan, we will start digging in early December. However, after meeting with the Senate Executive Committee last week for lunch, I have promised that we will be sending all students earplugs to live in the <laughs> residence halls so you will be able to sleep undisturbed. <laughs> The capital projects that were completed this year include the renovation of this beautiful auditorium, the duplicating suite, the creation of the Pit Stop Cafe, the commencement plaza and two new sports courts, basketball and volleyball. This summer, facilities completed a redesigned entrance for the east side of the McConnell Dining Room, renovated the restrooms on the third floor, and over fall break, we will begin the installation of an accessible ADA compliant elevator to be installed in McConnell and finished prior to graduation. We are also just a few weeks away from completing a second outdoor dining area. The installation of the modular units for our joint science program will be finished earlier than expected in October rather than November. And at that time we'll have an open house and a celebration because this, this will actually be the first time in the college's history that joint science will be physically located on our campus. And it's very fitting considering the strong and distinguished connection to <coughs> science the Pitzer family has, Kenneth and Russell both, both chemistry professors. Admissions, I think at this point most of you are familiar uh, with the incredible success that our admissions group had this year. I pointed out earlier this year to my son, the freshman in high school, uh, the fact that a third of the entering class came with a 4.0 or higher, hoping that we will take this message and learn from it. <laughs> and then on the second slide, uh, this is also really important, I think. 61% uh, of our students are from outside California. This is the highest percentage in the college's history, meaning that we have expanded our base and we are truly a national liberal arts college. The budget. I just can't talk enough about the budget. <laughs> we are ending the year with an operating surplus, a small one. The budget is balanced with one-third of normal endowment spending. Tuition increased 4.5% for this year, which is in the range of private four-year colleges. It also provides for salary increases for faculty and staff. We have also reinstated the salary administration program, market comparison and equity adjustments, and have fully funded the employer's contribution increase in our benefits plan. The increase in faculty salaries anticipates that assistant and associate professors will remain positioned within AAUP's 95th percentile, and senior faculty will be uh, within 92% of the 95th percentile. Increases in the cost of education are driven by the need to offer competitive faculty staff salaries to provide increasingly sophisticated technology maintain facilities, enhance academic program offices, and student support services, all within this very challenging economic environment. And while the financial condition of the college has certainly strengthened over the last eight years, the last two years were particularly trying for our investment returns. You'll notice, oh, if you just go back one sec, you'll notice that the lowest that I 
could bear to see our endowment drop on this graph was 77 million, but actually, I think at its lowest, it was 63. Uh, we have significantly recovered since that time, and we are now uh, about 95 million. Our return on our investments last year was 15%, the highest in the consortium, and I can't tell you how much I love saying this, higher than Harvard University. <laughs> came in with a cruddy 11%. <laughs> uh, I thought I would just show you the Dow Jones Industrial Average so you can see how closely our endowment has reflected the progress, uh, or lack of progress of the Dow Jones. Next advancement. Subtle, don't you think? <laughs> <laughs> Fundraising had a great, great year. The total amount raised as of Ju <laughs> June 30th, 2010, including annual fund, newly signed pledges, pledge payments, and cash was $8.1 million. Their goal was $7.1 million. And in this environment, I think we should give them some applause. <laughs> primarily providing support for financial aid for our students as well as faculty and staff salaries. The percentage of alumni who contributed to the annual fund increased this year from 30 to 33 percent, and parent participation grew enormously from 31 to 39 percent. Think about that, 39 percent of Pitzer parents contribute to the annual fund. The trustee annual fund goal was 600,000 and they came in at 700. As well, we received from various foundations a great deal of support, most significantly a million from the Mellon Foundation, a quarter of a million from the Arthur Vining Davis Foundation, and for the first time, 100,000 from the Hearst Foundation. Pitzer also won the senior gift competition for the fifth year in a row with 99% giving with a total of $17,500 raised as compared to 15,000 the previous year. Combined faculty and staff participation in the annual fund was 90%, with a total of $41,000 raised. This now means that for the third year in a, row, in a row, we are number one in the country for the highest participation by faculty and staff in the annual fund. And I want to thank all of you here for your support. Last year, Pitzer faculty continued their vital and essential work, teaching students, publishing scholarly works, doing action research, and giving papers at national conferences. Over the past eight years, the college has seen a generation of faculty retire, and the faculty-student ratio reduced. This year, we're at uh, 1 to 11 faculty students. In the period since uh, 2002, through the end of the past academic year, we have hired 25 new tenure track faculty. Six of these lines represent new hires at the institution or new lines, and the remainder are replacements. And I've included some information here for you. Uh, this has also been sent out, but noteworthy here is that we now have a record 71 tenure track faculty members, the largest number in the college's history. And this year, we welcome our newest tenure track faculty, all of whom were our first choice selections. They may, may be somewhat surprised to see themselves on screen. Michelle <laughs> Hernfeld, Patrick Ferry, Sarah Gilman, and Jeffrey Carrera. Searches. Searches for this year will be in global communities, Media Studies, Intercollegiate Department of Asian American Studies, and English and World Literature. Athletics. We had a spectacular <laughs> This is the highest percentage that Pitzer has ever had participating in our Division III athletic team program, 33%. Also, moving on, uh, we had a remarkable year in terms of winning SCIAC championships, and our <coughs> students represented the institution very, very well 
on the sports field and pool. And just the last bullet I think is quite interesting. Nearly half of our students participate in intramural athletics. And that means that it is even more important why we have to continue to expand our green space on campus and our athletic courts with this degree of participation. And in closing, I want to express <laughs> my deepest appreciation to the members of the President's Cabinet. It is an honor working with all of them. Uh, they work tirelessly on me. Now they look nice in a bouquet. They work tirelessly on behalf of the institution. And I am an extremely, extremely fortunate individual to work with people of this kind of integrity and caliber. And I'd also like to thank all of you, the faculty, the staff, the students, uh, for all of your loyalty and your fine work and your dedication to the college. And now there are a few people that I need to also recognize because they have now heard me give this speech at least a half a dozen times. Henry Fernandez, Lori Babcock, Andrea Olson, Lindsay Taylor, and Jennifer Berkeley. Thank you so much for having me. professionally and personally uh, a very happy one. After 16 years of effort, I finally finished my book and had it published. Uh, and I'm pleased to say that the first edition has sold out and it's going to the paperback. And so uh, I'm just thrilled uh, about it. So English, for those of you out there. <laughs> this August, uh, we celebrated my father's 91st birthday. And as I mentioned earlier, my son is now a freshman in high school. I was also delighted to be teaching with my colleagues, Drew McConnell. Uh, once again, we team taught uh, the Great Depression last fall, which seemed kind of particularly appropriate at the time. <laughs> and uh, it has been a professional and personal pleasure being part of this fine and wonderful community. And now we have come to the last outcome. <laughs> so I invite all of you to the Scott Courtyard to enjoy yourselves, and let's just have some nice, enjoyable moments together. Thank you very much.